Uh, so, yeah, on, on Friday, the UK High Court uh, approved the extradition of my brother Julian Assange. Uh, Julian has two weeks uh, to lodge an appeal to the Supreme Court. Uh, but what this, is, what this decision has shown, I think, is that we can no longer rely on the UK to stop, stop this uh, extradition and that uh, the prosecution of Julian uh, needs to be dropped, dropped here. Uh, in the US. The UK has no First Amendment. They have no uh, you know, press freedom protection like you do here in the US. Uh, so we can't rely on them uh, to stop uh, this prosecution. I just want a massive thank you, obviously, to everybody who's come out today. Uh, it's great to see everyone here. Um, the case against Julian, the prosecution against Julian, which is the first of its kind, uh, the first of its kind under the Espionage Act, uh, he's the first publisher and journalist to be charged under the 1917 Espionage Act. Uh, until now, the, the Espionage Act has been ref uh, for whistleblowers. It's only been whistleblowers uh, being prosecuted. So this is, uh, it is an attack, a like, direct attack on press freedom, a direct attack on the First Amendment uh, by the US DOJ, and it needs to be stopped. Okay, thank you, everyone. I wanted to ask you because Roger and a couple people spoke about how this is blatantly illegal, yeah. <laughs> which you never hear about. Uh, I wanted to ask you, seeing what the UK court ruled, um, what is your hope for an appeal uh, and you know the fight forward? Well, I think you know it was the, the it was the highest judge in the in in Wales and England, right? The Chief Justice was one of the two judges that were uh, that approved this appeal. Uh, so that means uh, an appeal to the Supreme Court. Julian has until the 24th of December to appeal to the Supreme Court. Uh, but it's very likely uh, that the Supreme Court will have to respect that decision because it's the Chief Justice. So uh, I, I think it's very clear now that uh, this case needs to be resolved here. Uh, we can't rely on the UK courts uh, to stop this. There's no First Amendment in the UK. Uh, press freedoms in the UK are... Uh, not as respected as they are here in the US. You know, you're very lucky you have these uh, protections uh, that they don't have in the UK. So I think here in the US people are, uh, are keeping a distance, but it, now we can see that it's coming here and needs to be stopped here, and the Biden administration could drop this tomorrow and Julian would walk free. You know, we had Blinken talking at the Democracy Summit, you know, talking about press freedom, talking about journalists around the world. This is an opportunity for Biden to send a message, Biden administration, send a message to journalists everywhere uh, that they're serious about press freedoms. Not only are they talking the talk, but they can walk the walk. And can I ask you, uh, it came out that your brother had a mini stroke, I believe. How is his health right now? Because I know it's been deteriorating. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's just another, it's just another, you know, he's feeling the pressure and, and it's immense and it's years and years. He's, it's been 11 years since he was first arrested in the UK. Uh, this is going to be his third Christmas uh, in um, in the maximum security prison, and the the pressure is bearing down on him. And you know, we we can't be surprised that he's going to have a stroke. I mean, what's next? Is he going to, you know, is like we live in fear that he could he won't survive this. And, and I think, you know, he just has to go home. He just has to be given bail, or, or Biden has to drop the charges. Uh, otherwise, he will die. And lastly. Uh, I think it shouldn't be understated. It's, the press doesn't ask Biden's administration about this, but his predecessor, President Obama, who Biden likes to, you know, attach himself to, uh, his Department of Justice found there, there, was, there was nothing they could do to charge uh, your brother and not hold accountable the New York Times and others who do the exact same work. Uh, do you think there needs to be more discussion about the fact that pre-Trump, uh, the administration Biden was part of uh, chose not to go after or prosecute your brother. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, you know, the Biden administration looks more like the Trump administration now. I mean, you know, I, I think everyone was expecting this to go away. Uh, and, and, and people are shocked that, that this is continuing. This Trump era attack on uh, press freedoms is continuing under, you know, the Biden administration. Uh, I think, yeah, it, but people need to bring that up. Why aren't, why aren't they doing this? Like Democrats, progressives, uh, you know, they're standing by watching this happen. Uh, when I know that, you know, their principles are different, you know. Um, these, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, it's all over. Guantanamo Bay, you know, Dick Durbin, the senator's trying to close Guantanamo Bay. And these are all results of uh, Chelsea Manning's leaks, you know. So I know the values 
the principles are different. So people just need to stand up and, and stand up for their principles. And I think it should be understated, Julian's an Australian citizen, as you're from Australia. Uh, I haven't heard anything from Australia, aside from a few uh, parli you know, parliament members in Australia. They don't seem to be speaking up for one well, of their citizens. Uh, yesterday, the, the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, Barnaby Joyce, who's actually in Washington, uh, he made a statement saying that Julian, uh, Julian Assange should not be extradited. So that is a big signal uh, that even the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia uh, believes that this case should be dropped and let go. Uh, so, you know, I think we're going to build on that and, and the momentum is building around the world uh, and the pressure needs to come to bear on Congress people here. Uh, they need to take a side. They can't stay silent anymore. It's coming. It's coming here.